the British were also vulnerable to attack closer to home. But in the English Channel, they had their own high-speed torpedo boat that could pack a punch. It wasn't only in the Mediterranean that the Allies had to face the menace of fast torpedo boats. The MS boats' German cousins, the Schnell boots, were also wreaking havoc in the English Channel. It was the perfect hunting ground. Britain depended on hundreds of coastal convoys that sailed from port to port. During the Second World War, the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy, began deploying its fleet of Schnell boats, or S-boats, along the Dutch and Belgium and French coasts. And these small, fast vessels were able to attack our channel convoys, which were vital to the war effort, carrying vast numbers of stores and supplies along the coasts of England. The Schnell boats were able to attack these convoys by crossing the North Sea or the English Channel at night and lying in wait for these convoys. The British needed a response to this. Destroyers are a good response. But the trouble here, again, is a destroyer is a, is a large, expensive, and very valuable weapon system. And so you're taking a very, very precious warship and you're using it to counter expendable warships, you know, ships that are one-tenth the size. What we really needed was a fast boat that was suitably armed with lightweight guns to be able to attack these enemy vessels. The Royal Navy's answer was the motor gunboat, or MGB. This is a veteran of World War II, MGB-81. As the name suggests, a motor gunboat's primary armament was guns, and these were actually mainly requisitioned anti-aircraft guns. On the bow was a 40 millimeter, two pounder pom-pom gun. It was a fully automatic gun, named after the sound it made firing. At the stern, you had two Orlikon 20 millimeter guns in a powered turret. Again, these were anti-aircraft weapons for small ships, but in an anti-shipping role for attacking enemy vessels of a similar size, they were very effective guns that could penetrate armored hulls and armored bridges. There were also two Lewis machine guns, useful for sweeping the decks of an enemy vessel. The final bit of armament for a motor gunboat were two depth charges, which could be dropped just ahead of an enemy vessel with the hope of exploding just beneath its keel and maybe breaking the back of the enemy ship. To take on the Nazi S-boats, the MGB had to match their speed. They did, with a little help from across the pond. Uh, and the power plant, which was the three uh, Packard engines which had come, they were a US designed engine, so coupled with the hull shape and the light weight, resulted in very, very high speeds. S-boats were hard to locate and destroy. They operated at night to avoid being attacked by the RAF. To find them, the MGBs would turn the tables and lie in wait for the S-boats close to their many bases along the coast of Europe. When their paths crossed, engines revved and guns blazed. The battle between S-boats and MGBs was, was chaotic, uh, to say the least. There was no order of battle, there was no predetermined plan. It would be very brief and it would be utter chaos. Robert Hitchens, an MGB commander, and one of the heroes of the British coastal forces wrote, It is hard to describe the confusion of such an engagement. The brilliant stream of light from Tracer crisscrossing like comets in every direction. The nearby ear-splitting crack of our own guns, blending into the more distant gunfire and roar of the engines. He thought in his base, it was very much a sort of go and get them. The speed gave them opportunity to get into trouble, get out of trouble again. They were the naughty boys of the channel. The daring raids of the MGB crews earned them the nickname 
spitfires of the sea, an answer to the dreaded S-boats. Prior to then, the S-boat had not really encountered anything with the same sort of speed and maneuverability, and the motor gunboat was an adversary that could compete with the S-boat on its own terms. By the spring of 1944, the spitfires of the sea were needed more than ever. D-Day approached. 